Hello, everybody. My name is Lizzie Meister. I'm the Public Programs Manager here at the Museum of the Southern Jewish Experience, and I'm excited to welcome you to this virtual tour of our new special exhibition, God, Goats, and Pickup Trucks, Maurice Schmidt's Visions of Texas. Um, our guide today will be Dr. Tina Rosala, the curator here at the museum. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, a little bit of housekeeping um, as we get started here. I ask that everybody stay on mute um, so we can best hear our tour guide today. Um, and if you have any questions, which I certainly hope you will, you can put them in the chat because at the end, Dr. Sala will be answering questions. Um, additionally, for your friends and family who are unable to make it today, we will be posting a recording of this tour to our YouTube channel in the coming days. Lastly, the programs like these are free to our community because of generous donations. To become a donor, um, you can visit msje.org backslash donate to learn more. And I'm going to pop that in the chat. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce Dr. Paula. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, good morning, noon, good noon, um, Central Time for everyone who is joining us today. We are here live at the Museum of the Southern Jewish Experience to talk to you about our latest temporary exhibition um, titled God, Goats, and Pickup Trucks, Marie Smith's Visions of Texas. Um, so this is how the program is going to um, look like today. Um, I will go around and show you some highlights of our exhibition. We will not have time to look at all of the pieces. We are just going to do a selection of some of them, um, which of course we hope will encourage you to then come over and see the rest. Um, but besides hiring a couple of pieces, um, I will also be giving you some behind the scenes tidbits of um, why we chose the exhibition, why we chose to design the way we did it, the layout of the room, and give you some kind of curatorial uh, behind the scenes secrets um, of what went on uh, when we are trying to set up, we were trying to set up this exhibition. Um, okay, so a little bit of info about the exhibition. We opened on January 26th, and we are still going to have this exhibition up until the end of May. So you have until May 31st this year to come and see this exhibition. Besides the exhibition, we are also working on additional programming. So we're having this program right now. But then on Thursday, May 11th, um, Laura Huckabee, who is the curator at the San Angelo Museum of Fine Arts, where most of these materials are coming from, um, will actually be coming from Texas um, to give a lecture um, at the museum on that Thursday evening. Um, and she's an art historian, so she will be talking about Maurice Smith, about his life, um, about the inspiration behind his paintings. So that will be a very interesting lecture to learn, learn more about the art itself. Um, and then Lizzie is also working on additional uh, programming that are still kind of up in the air, but we will be having a children's activity probably around Easter time in which there will be some crafting and some food activities. Um, and then we're also working on a more adult probably workshop or kind of a hands-on activity to go with this exhibition as well. So we still have a lot um, on the planning. So if you want to be updated on what is happening, um, I would say follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or sign up for our newsletter. We have a newsletter that comes out every so many weeks um, and it will have all the information about the additional programming around this exhibition. But for now, I would say let's get started and walk over to our first piece. So for you, you who have paid attention um, and have, took, a, uh, took a look at our title, you will recognize this little creature, um, our goat. <laughs> the goat became the mascot of our exhibition. So why are we starting with this painting? This is the one that really instigated this entire exhibition. Um, in the fall of 22, we were approached by Maurice Smith's family. Maurice Smith is there alive, still alive. Um, but he's getting older, and so his family is looking was, was looking for places where they can put his art in different institutions so that different people can learn about him and his work is dispersed um, throughout the country so that other people can enjoy it. 
And so, because Maurice Smith is from Texas, and which makes him very much a Southern guy, and he's Jewish, um, his work was, of course, a perfect fit for our exhibition. Um, so when we were approached, they were asking us, would you like to have a painting or a piece of art from Maurice Smith? Um, and we said, yes. Um, and so we were offered um, any painting that we liked, and um, it makes very diverse works. In our exhibition here, we have 23 of those pieces. Most of them are paintings, but he also has um, sketches, woodblock prints, lithographs, uh, a sculpture. Um, and so there was a lot to choose from. And the content of his work is also very uh, diverse. He has pieces that are very obviously um, Jewish. We'll look at a couple of them in a minute. Um, but most of his work isn't openly Jewish as it is more inspired hired by his Judaism. And so a lot of his work is uh, a reflection of what he sees in the landscape, what he sees in um, the Texas rural landscapes, and what reminds him of the Torah and what he would think um, in um, his Jewish upbringing. And so this work is titled Herzmen Are We, Both We and Thy Fathers. And we like it a lot because it's a very contemporary um, topic. It's um, two uh, Mexican gentlemen who are working um, and they're loading up the goats in their pickup truck. Hence the title of our exhibition, Got Goats and Pickup Trucks. Um, and they're toiling the field and it's a hot day. You see there's a bright sky behind them. And that really inspired uh, Marie Smith uh, to connect this piece to ancient Israel. Where we, we know from the Torah, there's so many stories about um, cattle and about the ancient Israelites herding their goats. Um, and so he saw immediately that connection between goats as substance in the ancient world. People would use their, um, their skin to make curtains. They would use their milk to make cheese. They would eat the meat. Um, with the modern connection of people are still herding these goats, people are still toiling the field, people are still working the, the landscapes in modern Texas. And we really like that kind of symbolic interpretation of um, the ancient text, and that is why our eye fell um, on this one, and uh, we chose this painting uh, to be part of our collection, so this is ours now. Um, and so because we had this painting, we thought, well, why don't we do an entire exhibition around this artist? For people who were here when we opened the museum um, about a year and a half ago, our first ever exhibition was a uh, black and white photography exhibition. So we had beautiful photographs up all around these walls, but they were all black and white. And we wanted to contrast that with a very bright exhibition. So this was, of course, a big inspiration behind how we designed this entire room. We wanted it to be bright and colorful and stand out and happy. Um, and so that is why we thought that could be a perfect example um, of an exhibition. <laughs> Furthermore, you might also ask, okay, but why art? Why fine art? Aren't you a history museum? Um, yes, but we are a little bit of everything. Um, so downstairs in our uh, uh, permanent collection, we do tell the story of Jews in the South in a historical chronological order, right? The first Jews coming in, 17th century, 18th, 19th century, and then what people were doing, the kind of jobs that they had, the struggles that they had. But Judaism is so much more than that. And so in this temporary exhibition space that we have here, we want to use this opportunity to also tell other stories, stories that are not necessarily about history, um, but that show all aspects of Jewish life and of human life. And if art is not an aspect of that, I don't know what is. So we thought it was important that we can diversify the kind of exhibitions that we're offering here in this space. And a fine arts exhibition um, fits with that goal. And so that is why we chose um, to do this exhibition here. Okay, so let's move on to our next wall. So I've been talking a lot about Maurice Smith, but who is Maurice Smith? So Maurice uh, was born in 1936 in New Braunfels, uh, Texas. And uh, growing up in the 50s and 60s, he was already from a very young age, very inspired by the landscapes and by people and felt 
an end need 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 to express that through art. And so um, what we know, what I have are, are telling here um, about Maurice Smith mostly comes from this book. So Maurice Smith also um, made this catalog uh, together with the San Angelo, the San Angelo Museum, um, in which he kind of explains what his life trajectory has been, why he's an artist, why he chose to pursue this passion. Um, but then it also gives interpretations of the paintings or the art that he made, um, tells stories of inspiration behind the paintings. And so in this museum or in this exhibition, we decided that we wanted to have his words speak to us. So because he has this book and he, we know his inner thoughts, um, we wanted to communicate those thoughts with you and not reinterpret interpret his works. Um, and so we made a design decision that pretty much all of our labels, except for this one, um, are direct quotes from Maurice himself, in which he talks about what drove him to make a certain painting, the decisions he made in style, in composition, in color. Um, and so we really wanted you to be surrounded by not only the visual depictions of Maurice Smith's work, but also his words and his reasonings behind all of that. So all of the panels are direct quotes um, from him. And so all of these quotes and all of these stories are then combined in this catalog, which we also sell in our gift shop if you would be interested in, um, in buying that work. Anyway, back to Maurice. So growing up in the 50s and 60s, he had that very typical Southern Jewish story where his family was one of the only families in town that was Jewish. And so he tells the story about when he was 14, they used to travel to um, the big city for the high holidays where all the local Jewish families would meet up in a hotel and they would have celebrations there. Um, and he would go to synagogue in that hotel. And he tells the story about um, how he was sitting in synagogue one day and he was looking at the stained glass windows in the building and saw the light come through it and saw the colors being reflected on people, on the furniture, on the floor, and how for them, for him, that was kind of a divine moment where it sparked the beauty for color and for composition and for the divinity and everything. It was just a, a, a sort of a divine light um, coming through those windows and highlighting the beauty in everyone around him. And that was kind of his first religious moments and spiritual moments where he realized that he wanted to combine his deep spiritual feelings with his artistic abilities. And so I really like this um, self-portrait that he made when he was 24 years old, uh, because it immediately shows the kind of works that he would be creating for the rest of his life. It's very bold, it's very colorful. You can see the different paint color that he uses here on his palette. Um, it kind of reminds me of the painting of Van Gogh and the, and the bedroom, uh, but his bed in the background. And so you can, you can already see that this is the kind of style uh, that he's going to go after. Um, so he painted this when he was 24, and then he just kept on working and painting his entire life. He eventually became a professor um, at Texas A&M, where he taught art. And so this is really a man who just lives and breathes um, for art and for his spirituality through his art. Okay, let's move to the next place. So I said that some of his paintings are more overtly uh, Jewish than other ones. And this one is of course a good example of that. So we decided to divide the space into different areas. So if you have all these paintings, like I said, we have 23 pieces. You have to think about as a curator, um, how are you gonna set this up in the, in the room? Are you gonna do this chronologically, the old paintings first and then do this late, or are you gonna do it thematic? And so we chose to do it thematic. So in this little area here, uh, we have two very bright, big paintings and two black and white sketches um, that all have a very deep um, Jewish uh, uh, depiction on them. And so this one is called Torah Procession. And it shows uh, the bar mitzvah of his son, Joshua. So or his son, Joshua, here in front, is uh, 12, 13 years old, and he's having his bar mitzvah done um, at synagogue, and he's carrying the giant Torah scroll, and behind him are a panther and, and a rabbi, and all carrying um, uh, scrolls. And 
And I, I really like this painting because it's just so bold and so in your face, but it also shows a very intimate moment, right? It's his son becoming a man. And so he talks in his catalog about how this all brought, it brought everything together. It was transitioned from little child to manhood, but then also carrying the Torah from the Torah shrine up to the Bimat, the lecture is a transitioning, uh, an important moment within the service where you're transitioning from you to childhood, you're transitioning from um, uh, uh, one generation upon the other, he, he, the, the father and the son, uh, their relationship changes, now they become both two adults, um, and it also ties in with ancient traditions, um, this region had been going on for thousands of years, and so he thought it was a very important moment in his son's um, life that he wanted to incorporate this uh, into his art. Um, but I also like it that the Torah scrolls are very majestic. They're giant. They're almost bigger than the people himself. Um, and it just kind of shows what he thought, found important in that moment. I also want to point out that in this exhibition, we have a movie playing. Um, it's on the side, you can't see it right now, but we have a screen here and we have a 25 minute documentary that was made a couple of years ago by Joshua um, about his dad in which he interviews Maurice and asks him all kinds of questions. Um, and the, the documentary is titled Majesty and Tenderness. And I thought, I thought that this painting would go um, great with that because it's very majestic but also very tender about his son. So, so I thought that title uh, was very aptly chosen for the documentary um, that we're playing here in this room. Okay. So this is the second painting that we have here in our Jewish um, little corner, um, which is another moment in um, Joshua's Bar Mitzvah where he is now reading uh, the Torah scroll. And again, he's surrounded by, um, by the rabbi and the cantor. But what I really like about this painting is the, the use of color. Um, so he talks in his work about how he wanted to have a majestic golden light come out of the painting um, to kind of show how regal and important this divine moment is. But then it contrasts really well with the very bright, pure white color of the robes. Plus then the yellows and the blues and the purple, which kind of remind us of ancient times when people would wear these robes with purple and blue um, stripes on them. So it kind of ties in ancient traditions and modern traditions and divine moments and secular intimate moments all into one piece just by using um, color. And so I feel like that uh, really shows what uh, Maurice Smith found important. And from a design point, that is why we chose to do all our labels, all our designs, um, all of our little labels next to the next to the paintings um, in very bright colors as well. If we didn't want to build this out and make everything black and white, that doesn't feel like Maurice. Maurice would want anything colorful. So we made our labels and our um, anything that we have written on the wall also very colorful as well um, to go with his, his favorite style. Okay. Okay, so we said we have an area where we um, show some of these works that are ultimately um, Jewish and have Jewish uh, motifs and show Jewish moments. Um, and th on this wall, and this is also the wall where we started, we put some of his works where he was more inspired by the landscape and what he would see around him when he was living in Texas. Um, and then also a lot of agricultural scenes. So we have a painting with a tractor, we have one with a boat, this one has a train on it. So clearly he was also inspired by big mechanical um, objects. And so a couple of those um, we, pay, we put on this wall um, as a cohesive story about his interpretations. Um, <laughs> this painting is called Night Fright and it shows a big train um, coming in. So it's dark in the background. So this is at night coming in at night with this big cyclopean kind of lamp uh, that really brightens up the scene in front of you. And I think this painting really shows how Maurice is not necessarily a realist, right? It is, it's not a one-on-one -on -one reflection of what this would have looked like in real life. It's not a, a photograph, 
Um, he's an impressionist or an expressionist, right? It's about the feelings and the emotions that you get when you're seeing these, uh, these scenes. It's about uh, the use of color, the light coming in, the kind of mood that he wants to set, um, that you should feel when you see these big, you know, very bright colored uh, trains coming at you at night must have been a very impressive scene. And that's kind of what he's trying to convey here um, in this painting. So at this point, I wanted to say that uh, we're going to show you a very small clip. So I said we had that 25 minute uh, uh, documentary here um, in our exhibition. And so we're going to show you about two minutes of that video right here in which he actually talks about trains and this particular painting so i don't want to assume that i know everything about murray smith and why he did what he did but we can tell uh, we can let you uh, hear him and his own words so we're going to start that now my father loved trains i grew up with i have a, something of that fascination with trains and whenever the train comes through we watch it and it goes by, and I always think it has become a metaphor for me because it has that loud sound, so it carries like a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and it, it carries a lamp, and it carries a chauffeur, a horn and a lamp. And you hear that chauffeur coming, and that light is flashing sometimes at night, and then that sound of that powerful chauffeur, and then I see uh, the gates by the tracks, you know, those wooden gates, and they bow down. It always reminds me that they're, they're bowing down because God is coming through. And then when it finishes and the train goes back, and I really literally do this, and then I watch those sticks go, go back up, and I think of the Psalm of David, lift up your heads, O gates, that the King of glory may come in. And I do that quite all the time. It's a little prayer, I'll say, when the, when the train comes in. I'm not worshiping the train. I'm not praying to the, I'm not any, there's no magic at all involved in it. It's just a metaphor. It's a metaphor and, and to, to me. If you start thinking that way, you just see the world different. It's a little like Don Quixote, you know, they saw windmills and he thought that they were monsters. <laughs> and some of that is a big element in imagination. You're not being fooled. We know, I know what it is. It's not, a, it's not God, it's not that. But it manifests some of the, something of a, the beauty of it manifests something that's, that's divine. And that, you might say, uh, that divine dimension is very elusive. So when I watch a train, there's a part of it that that train speaks to me about things that are not uh, factually, or the person who designs or driving the train is not part of his view of that train. But it is for me, it becomes a metaphor. And that's what the Torah, that's how the prophets describe happenings, is in these kinds of metaphors. There's a phrase in the Torah. Okay, so that was uh, the man himself um, talking about that, that painting about the train. But I feel like you could already tell from those couple of minutes, right, describe what kind of guy he was and how it would make so much sense that this art was made by him and how it reflects his inner feelings. And he has such a beautiful way of um, talking about life and such a way that poetic style, not only in his art, but also in his words of how he, see the world, how he sees the world and, and what it does to him. And so because he's so poetic and his words are so beautiful, that's why I said we don't want to um, reinterpret um, his works in our own world, uh, words. He has said it so beautifully already. There's no way we can do it better. Um, so instead, what we decided is that each um, portrait, each painting has a label, but then it also has a QR code. And so if you scan the QR code, if you come in here and you have your phone on you, you scan the QR code, that is when you get that whole story that you can read um, about what, the, what this painting is and what inspired Maurice um, to make this certain painting. And so for me, um, I'm not necessarily an art historian, 
Um, so a painting to me, a piece of, of, of work only comes alive when I hear the context. And so a painting, um, if you just look at it, black cows, orange cows, okay. But it's only when you hear the story about the day um, when he went up that hill and it was a warm day and he was taking a breather under a tree and he saw these cows passing by, living their own life, walking in, in solitude, walking in calmness under the, the sun, where you could feel that day coming alive and when you could feel um, the appreciation for making a work like that. And so I thought it was very important that we would have QR codes that give that extra bit of information about each work to the people who want it. So we put a couple of sentences of information on the label itself, but then if you want extra information, we have it to your disposal. Um, okay, so this is also a really good place to say that I mentioned we put quotes of uh, Maurice all around the galleries. And so here we put a quote up as well so that you could really be surrounded by that voice of Maurice as you're going through his works. And here we have a couple of panels where we have um, animals depicted on, um, on his work. So one of the big inspirations for his life, his work, were animals, the innocence, the majesticness of animals, um, how he saw divinity in um, God's creatures walking the countryside, and so we decided to take a couple of pieces where he's really celebrating um, animals and put them here together um, on these walls. On this wall, on the other hand, we have put portraits. So here, this is a wall where we put all the uh, pieces of art that we have uh, from Maurice together that depict uh, people. And I also mentioned that we don't all only have uh, paintings, we also have um, a sculpture, we also have some wood uh, block prints, but we also have lithographs. And this is a lithograph. So what is a lithograph? Um, it's basically, um, you take a piece of stone, this also means stone in, in, in Greek, um, or you can do it with a metal um, piece too. But you polish it really well, so it becomes very flat and shiny. And then you have these wax crayons in which you can make a design on the piece of, of stone itself. And then you treat it chemically and make sure that certain areas are more chemically treated than others, but you can have shades and variation um, on it. And then you roll it with some ink, and then the last step is that you press a piece of paper on that stone that you just made. And then the end result is this um, Mexican Madonna, a lithograph that he made. Um, and so he talks in his, in his work a lot about how for him, art is poetic, it's cre creative, uh, but it's also craftsmanship. And making a lithograph demands a lot of practice. It's, it's, it's a process that can take years to really master. And so for him, that was also important, how he was um, always experimenting with different materials, different techniques, different tools, so that he could express the feelings that he had within himself to all different kinds of media that was fitting, fitting for one sentiment or the other. And so he, uh, he calls himself also a craftsman that has worked on his skill for many years. And so it was important to us that we would have different pieces made from different mediums with different techniques um, in our gallery to kind of show us the, the breadth of his abilities in this exhibition. And this is where we're going to end for today. I think we're about half an hour in. I want to leave the last 15 minutes for questions, et cetera. Um, but we decided to end um, this exhibition with a couple of pieces that have a similar theme, people sitting on benches. Um, and it kind of shows you how he saw that beauty in the mundane, right? So we have a woman sitting at a bus stop. Um, on the other hand, we have other people sitting on benches. Um, and it really shows how Maurice was able to see 
to see the beauty and the art in um, scenes that are, might be so so daily alive and so uh, mundane to us, but he could really sit there and observe people just having a moment, just contemplating life, um, just looking around him, walking around in San Antonio, he says he would often see these people taking a break, taking a moment in their day, sitting around, um, and he was always wondering what were they thinking of, you know, what were they contemplating life, and what I find so beautiful is that there's actually kind of like three layers um, in, in this work, right? So you have topic itself, this person sitting on a bench, contemplating life, thinking about whatever is going on in their daily life. Then you have Maurice, who is observing these people and contemplating about these people, contemplating life, what were they doing? What was the life like? And then now we have us, watching through Maurice these people sitting on benches and so now we are contemplating life through Maurice con contemplating life through people contemplating life um, and I like these layers how yes these are very daily scenes but if we really stop to think about it and really start to think about what, what does it mean to be human what does it mean um, to walk through life and think about the difficulties of life and the beauty of life um, I feel like Maurice really make sure that we also stand still and think about that moment. And he's showing us, look, this is important. This is beauty, this is life. Um, we should just not take it for granted. We should also try to see um, the beauty and the silence and the calmness in those, in those little moments, which I thought was such a beautiful message um, to end the exhibition with as you are leaving um, the space and go back into the real world and start looking around you and seeing the beauty in the landscapes and the animals and the portraits and the people. So that's our tour. <laughs> so I hope that you kind of saw um, why we decided to do this exhibition and kind of the messages that you can get through it. And um, like I said, we're still open until the end of May. Um, so we would love to come and have you here um, come and enjoy these works up close because it, it really doesn't do it justice if you see it in a, in a book or on a screen. It's only when you see it up close and you can see the, the grittiness of the paint and the dimensions of the material that he used um, that these paintings really come alive. Um, and then plus there are many, many other works that I didn't show you um, that you might want to come and check out for yourself. So we are open every day, nine to five, except for Tuesdays, uh, 10 to five, except for Tuesdays. So please, uh, Come on by and I look forward to your questions. If you have any, feel free to put them in the chat and I will try to answer them as good as I can. One chat that came through um, is a logistical chat. Will the complete film be available on the museum website or is there access to the Yes, it film actually anyway? it's on Vimeo. Ah, perfect. It's on Vimeo. <laughs> yes. So actually you don't have to come to the museum to see the video. Maybe you want to watch the video before you come to the museum so that you already have an informed ID. Um, about what to expect, but the video is uh, available on Vimeo and you can put it in the, I don't know if you can put it in the chat, but we can give you the link and then uh, and you can watch it there. In a follow-up email, I will put the video yes. link in the chat. Yes. It's called Majesty and Tenderness, so if you just for that Google Majesty and Tenderness Maurice Smith, then uh, he also has a beautiful website where he has all of his works up um, on there as well, so you can enjoy them this way. Um, Someone asked where it is, Maurice live now? Um, he still lives, uh, he's in a retirement home now. I believe he's 86. Um, and we did, we did involve him a little bit in this exhibition. So of course we really wanted him to be here, um, but that wasn't possible. The family said that he is not um, able to travel anymore. But we did talk to him over Zoom and um, actually they, they had a little celebration party um, at, at the retirement home when this opened and they sent us a picture of where he had some New Orleans beads on and a New Orleans colored hat and they were having a little watch party at the retirement home for this exhibition which is like warmed my heart so so he still lives in a very tiny village around San Antonio um, yeah. uh, we have a question are there any special exhibition projects that you're hoping to do in the future looking forward Yes, so there is one of the books that I can already confirm. Um, halfway November of this year, we will be opening one on the Rosenwald schools. And so for people who don't know, the Rosenwald schools were opened during the time of segregation, 1912, 1930s, um, in the South. 
um, as a means of educating Black communities, elementary schools in Black communities. And those Rosenwald schools were built all over the South, uh, but it was a project that um, was uh, started by uh, Booker T. Washington, is that the name? Um, and uh, Julius well, uh, Roosevelt, who was Jewish, right? And so it, it's going to be a um, black and white photography exhibition. There's a, an, an artist who went around and took pictures of these schools and they're still around, some of them. Um, and then sometimes with alumni, people who had gone to these elementary schools um, in the pictures as well. Um, and so we're going to tell you the story about how these schools came to be, what they meant for people in the South, uh, connections between African-American communities and Jewish communities in the South. And we're all going to have very interesting programming around that. We're going to invite different partners in the community to talk about um, what these schools meant and what they have done here in the South for education and for African-American communities. Um, so that one is open, is set to open halfway November. So that is one and that we have on our on our plans already, yes. Um, circling back to Maury Schmidt's work, mm -hmm. what surprised you most about his work? What surprised me most? Um, I think he made me uh, appreciate color, <laughs> which is kind of, so I, I am not really into bright colors as much. I tend to dress kind of dark, my rooms at home, my, my apartment's kind of dark, I like black and white. Um, but his use of color is just so interesting. And um, we actually decided to integrate that story that I talked to, to you about, about the stained glass windows, also in the exhibition hall. So we have a couple of windows in this room here. And so we decided to print some of his um, paintings on see-through panels, and those are were put in, in the windows. And now we have that same effect that he was talking about, about the light coming through in synagogue, actually recreated in our exhibition room, but the stained glass windows are his painting. So it's really a, a, a circle, a full circle, um, where that light is now coming in through his paintings, lighting up the room in bright yellow and bright red. Um, and I actually really like it. So that was surprising to me that I would like, that I would like these brightly colored um, um, I believe we have time for one more um, question. You mentioned quotes. Do you have a quote that connected most with you or your colleagues here at the museum? Hmm, we do have a lot of quotes. Huh? Um, I think he, I like the one where he's talking about portraits, where he says, um, you know, when babies are born, they're all the same, you know, they kind of all look the same, a little bit of dad, a little bit of mom, but more or less in the first couple of days, they're all very generic. And it's only when people grow up, when we start getting little features that set us apart, that um, poetry and beauty in the human soul and the human body comes alive. And so how, you know, some of us get wrinkled, another one gets spots and whatever. And, and he just says, but that's what makes us individuals, right? And that is where the beauty and the story of the human body is, the, the kind of hardship that you went through, the, the things you endured. Um, and so the, the older we get, the more beautiful we are and the more art there is in your own body. And I thought that was a very wholesome message that I'm trying to uh, hold on to. Um, but th that just shows how he saw beauty and the mundane in such a way that not everyone always does. And I, I, I really like that quote. That's my favorite. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera back to me, the disembodied voice for Lizzie, your public programs manager. Um, I want to thank you all for being with us today. Um, and thank you to Dr. Salas for this wonderful tour. Um, as a reminder, if uh, you or your uh, family or friends would like to see another of uh, see this again or you want to send it to them this will be on our youtube channel in the coming days the best way to keep updated with us here at the museum is to um, follow us on social media and subscribe to our newsletter um msje.org backslash contact and my final little thing is these programs are available to folks um, because of generous donations so if you would like to support the mission of the museum of the southern Jewish experience I encourage you to do so at msje backslash dot org backslash donate. Fantastic. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. <laughs>